Hello, all of you vaingloriously wonderful people. The Beach Properties DLC for City Skylines 2 dropped yesterday, bringing new assets to the game and, more importantly, a huge patch bringing about performance improvements and bug fixes. Has it made any difference? Well, I could go into a long explanation, but let's cut to the chase. No, the game is still a mess, I still don't enjoy playing it, and I still think you shouldn't buy it. I had planned on jumping back into my Edgewood save today and working on a new neighborhood using the beachfront properties, but I just couldn't do it. I did record a lot of my time poking around this update, so let's talk about some of my biggest complaints about the game. Keep in mind, these are my opinions. You're allowed to have your own opinions, thoughts, and feelings about the game that are different than my own. That's fine. So keep in mind that I can have a different opinion than you. Neither of us are right or wrong, we just have differing thoughts on it. So let's jump into my top problems with City Skylines 2. Number one, the city just does not feel alive. No one is enjoying time in a park. Kids aren't playing in a playground. People just stand around in their front yards. Even emergency services lacks any signs of life. A fire truck pulls up and magically the house stops burning? I want to see firemen playing with their hoses. I want to see people actually enjoying parks. And no, the homeless people living in the parks that just stand around do not count. Number two, many assets appear as though they were not really thought through all that well and function poorly as a result. The best example of this is the bus station. This is an asset you want centrally located so pedestrians can easily walk to it and catch a bus. But the way the asset is designed causes a steady stream of pedestrians to block the entrance and exit lanes, creating a conga line of buses, resulting in traffic jams and thousands of people waiting for their bus. It's things like this that really make me wonder just how much playtesting and quality control really went into City Skylines 2 before its release. Number three, lack of variety. Everything in this game just seems like the same handful of buildings over and over ad nauseum. It is virtually impossible to create neighborhoods that have their own unique vibe. People say the original City Skylines was like this too, and it was only through DLC that it got better. And well, I call bullshit on that. I picked up Game Pass earlier this year, so I installed the original City Skylines without any DLC. I admit that does include years of updates, but Vanilla City Skylines without DLC still has a greater diversity of buildings than City Skylines 2. To be sure it just wasn't the benefit of years of updates in the Game Pass edition, I went back and watched my original City Skylines content from almost 10 years ago. Yep, the variety was there way back in the beginning without any DLC. Number four, the city management simulation under it all still does not matter. All the infographics are meaningless because A, they're so poorly designed that they aren't really communicating anything useful and B, none of it really has an impact. Colossal Order can write as many Word of the Week articles as they want explaining why the simulation is indeed working. But if I, as the player, cannot perceive any of this during my gameplay, then it doesn't matter how well it is working. I think to a house I rented when I was in college. The air conditioner never kept the house cool. The landlord insisted the compressor was running, the Freon was charged, and the blower was working. Everything was functional, but my house was still really damn hot, so I didn't care that things were technically working because it was 80 degrees in my living room. And it's the same thing with the underlying city simulation in City Skylines 2. I can't really tell anything is actually happening that has any meaningful impact on the city I'm building. It all feels like a big, bland city painter. Number five, I hate the XP system. This one is unpopular, I know, but I think milestones should still be tied to population. Yes, the unlocks in the original city skylines were kind of stupid, with things that small towns need and have in real life being locked away until you had a large population. I do like the development points and having the freedom to pick and choose what I want to unlock and when. 
But those points should come from the population, not from plopping parks, spamming power stations, or building some random roads. I should not be able to cheese this system so easily and wind up at Megaopolis with everything unlocked with a population of 47,000. I should at best be at maybe milestone 9 or 10, but 47,000 people is not a Megaopolis. Number 6, let's talk about performance. I've seen City Planner play his benchmarks, and I cannot argue with his methodology or the results. So clearly some performance optimization has occurred. But the overall performance was never much of an issue for me. I could always run at 60 frames per second. I think there is still a very, very long way to go, however. I play a ton of different games, and none of them make my PC sound like a small jet waiting for takeoff like City Skylines 2 does. For background, my PC is pretty solid. It has an i9-12900K CPU, RTX 4080 GPU, 64GB of DDR5 RAM, and 100% of my storage is PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSDs. It's air-cooled in a fractal design torrent case, which is known for exceptional airflow to help keep system temperatures low. Yet, City Skylines 2 hammers my hardware so hard that I see temperatures that are rivaled only by benchmarking tools. Switching the graphics presets from high to medium has zero impact on this problem. The only other game that has ever pushed my system this hard and to these temperatures is Flight Simulator, and even that is not a constant. I can see no valid reason for City Skylines 2 to put the same type of load on my hardware as benchmarking software does. The performance optimization still has a long way to go. Number 7. Let's switch gears and talk about this DLC. Simply put, this first DLC cost way too much for far too little content. Enough has been said about this by other people, so I'm not even going to bother. City Platter Plays perfectly summarized how I feel about this, so go watch his video. Also, locking some extra landscaping options behind a paid DLC is just greedy and gross. But for number 8, while we're talking about the DLC, how can you release a Beach Properties DLC and not include anything even remotely related to, you know, beaches? None of the housing has any real design that makes you immediately think of the beachfront or even beach adjacent homes. Not one. They are mostly incredibly generic and bland to go with all of the other mostly generic and bland assets that were already problematic. And since there's a lot of repetition with these new assets, they do nothing to move towards solving the lack of variety problem that I talked about earlier. Number 9. PDX mods will never be on par with Steam Workshop. You can disagree, but I see nothing here that changes my mind. This is a terrible UI, I can't easily see a rating for each mod, and I can't easily find helpful information that describes the mod or has feedback from the mod creator and the community. PDX mods sucks. And number 10, on that note, why, six months later, are we just now getting some mod support and it's in beta? This is yet another example of a game that was rushed out the door long before it was ready. Had this been early access, PDX mods in beta would be perfectly acceptable. But this was a full retail launch that we all paid full retail dollars for. Rolling out an essential core component of the game six months late, then using paying customers to beta test it is unacceptable. And what is up with the non-stop errors? City Planner Plays remarked that he thought PDX Mods was fast, but that was not my experience today. I can only assume that those who had early access to this update felt it was fast because very few people had access to it. My experience was long loading animation and constant errors. It's almost as though they simply did not have enough server capacity to keep up with demand. And if that's the case, how could that even happen? You release a sequel to a game that was kept popular by mods, but you release it without any modding. Six months later, you finally add some modding support but fail to properly plan for the crush of people who will be trying it to see if PDX Mods has brought about any redemption to the game. 
I do not quite understand how Colossal Order and Paradox keep winding up with so many unforced errors with this game. Everything that I have talked about today has completely eroded the last glimmer of hope that I had that Colossal Order and Paradox would get it together and this update would demonstrate that they either could or wanted to turn this around. They either lack the will, happy to do what EA has done with The Sims by introducing content poor paid DLC that introduces a whole host of bugs, while simultaneously relying on their modding community and custom asset creators to keep the whole thing alive. Or they lack the ability. I doubt it's this one though, because hey, City Skylines was and is a great game that just kept getting better and better. At this point, you couldn't pay me to buy another game from Colossal Order or Paradox. I was really looking forward to Life by You, but I've removed it from my wish list and have zero plans on buying it. I doubt I'll even check out any of the reviews when it comes out. Paradox has so thoroughly destroyed their reputation in my eyes that it will most likely be years before I even bother looking at anything related to a game they publish. Before I wrap up, I want to say that I do not enjoy having these opinions. I have been a fan of a good city builder since the original SimCity when it was still a DOS game. I have thousands of hours in every PC version of that game. And I was heartbroken when SimCity 2013 came along and burned it all down with that flop of a game. Then City Skylines came along and I could once again enjoy one of my favorite game genres. For me, it started off strong and then just moved from strength to strength with each passing update and DLC. When City Skylines 2 was announced and the marketing began, I had no reason to doubt that Colossal Order was going to deliver on everything they were showcasing and we were going to have a banger of a sequel. Instead, I find myself with a game that was released before it was finished, with a major update six months later, further eroding my confidence in the developer, and looking at a DLC that is overpriced and lacks anything of actual value. I really want City Skylines to turn this corner and emerge as a proper city builder that I can sink thousands of hours into. But at this point, I just don't think it'll ever happen. And that makes me sad. And that wraps it up for me for this update, even if it wasn't the video I was hoping to make today. I have no idea if or even when I will return to City Skylines 2 content on my channel. I am of the opinion that if I am not enjoying a game, then I should not be creating videos about it. So for now, I'm going to hit the pause button on City Skylines 2. In the meantime, I plan on checking out New Cycle, and I still have my Timberborn series going, so please check those out. And I am considering jumping back into the original City Skylines as well, so keep an eye out for that. Until next time, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.